Hi, I'm Marilyn, the Director of Living Collections at the South Florida Museum. And the South Florida Museum has a role with the MRP, the Manatee Rescue and Rehabilitation Partnership. We are a second stage rehabilitation facility for manatees. Snooty serves as a mentor for the animals that are going to go back out into the wild, and we provide them with a home and a place to eat in the interim. I'd like to introduce to you Ashley Gert and Brittany Serafin. Brittany is our Assistant Curator of Living Collections, and Ashley is one of our Manatee Care Specialists. Hi, as Marilyn mentioned, my name is Ashley, and I'm a Manatee Care Specialist here at the South Florida Museum. We thought what better way to celebrate Endangered Species Day than to talk about our favorite endangered animal, the Florida Manatee. We are fortunate enough to be home to Snooty, this manatee right here. Snooty is the oldest manatee in captivity and arguably the oldest manatee in the world. He is 67 years old and will be turning 68 on July 21st. We know this because Snooty was actually born in an aquarium all those years ago and he was born down in Miami, but he came up to Bradenton when he was very young and pretty much from birth, Snooty was hand fed. He made an association between food and people, and this is the real reason why Snooty was never released. If Snooty was released, the idea was he would probably look for us rather than find food on his own, and this would greatly increase his chance of being hit by a boat. Now, Snooty is still interactive with today because he's a little bit of a, an exception to the rule. Uh, since he was already in human care long before the Endangered Species Act and all the other protections we have for manatees today, he's essentially been grandfathered in. So although we house other manatees here at the museum, Snooty is the only manatee that we hand feed and that we interact with. We are a rehab facility. We do have two other manatees with us right now. Their names are Ice Cube and Sarah Solo. And we are not a manatee hospital. We are where manatees go when they are healthy enough to leave the hospital, but they can't quite yet be released into the wild. And so we house them until they are ready to do so. Uh, manatees, while they are here, we are feeding them things that you and I could possibly eat. And this is because manatees are herbivores. So they eat nothing but plants. And while they're here, we are feeding them lots of romaine lettuce. We are also feeding our rehab manatees kale, carrots, and potatoes. And these four food items mimic uh, the nutrition of wild plants. Now, of course, the manatees go back out into the wild. They're not going to be eating kale and lettuce. What they are looking for is seagrass predominantly. Although manatees really aren't that picky, um, they do have to eat a lot every day. Um, just to give you an idea, Snooty here eats about 100 pounds of food every day. And that being said, they, eat, uh, they are not very picky about the plants that they eat. Seagrass is their staple though. That's what they are really designed to eat. And this is why manatees are often found in very shallow water. Just like plants on land, uh, plants in the water need sun in order to grow, and so they only grow in very shallow water where there is enough sunlight to get down to them. Because manatees eat grass, and they're generally slow moving, um, this is what has given the manatee the nickname of sea cow. They're not actually related to the cow in any way, they just share a very similar kind of lazy lifestyle. Manatees are able to afford this lazy lifestyle because they do not have a natural predator. So manatees can live in fresh or salt water, um, and they will encounter both alligators and sharks, but as far as we know, neither of those animals actually prey on the manatee. We think part of the reason for that is because manatees can be huge. Uh, just to give you an idea, Snooty here is almost 10 feet long, and he weighs about 1,100 pounds. Now this is a big animal, but actually girl manatees can be much larger. Uh, they can be 14 feet long and weigh over 3,000 pounds. So this is a very big animal and it would be very difficult for a shark or an alligator to prey upon the manatee. Now I mentioned that they're not related to the sea cow. They do have a relative that is alive today, but surprisingly this animal does not live in water. The closest relative to the manatee is actually the elephant. And they do still share some similarities with the elephant, as in they're both big and gray. And they do have some similar skin to an elephant. It is a little bit wrinkly, and they have tiny hairs dotted all over their body. You can sometimes see that as little dots when their body breaks the surface of the water. 
Now manatees also have little flipper nails like an elephant's foot. Um, but one of the things that you know may be seen as the most common thing they have with the elephant is they do have a little bit of an elephant's trunk. It's just very, very short. Manatees use this shortened trunk um, just like an elephant would. Elephants use this trunk to reach high up into trees to pull food into their mouth. Now manatees do not need to reach high up into trees, but they do sometimes like to feed on the surface of the water. So this trunk, they use it by uh, flaring it open, and they actually pull food into their mouth. Now, on this trunk, they have lots of little whiskers. We call these vibrissae, and they are very, very sensitive. Just to give you an idea of how many the manatee has, we talked about those little sensory hairs that they have all over their body. Uh, the manatee has about, oh, here comes Snooty. Manatees have about 5,000 of these sensory hairs all over their body, and about 2,000 of these hairs are just on their face. So once they find their food via these uh, nice whiskers here, they can immediately start eating by using that lip to pull food into their mouth. Now manatees also have very similar teeth to an elephant. You can see, oh, here we go, Snooty. Oh, <laughs> so the teeth of a manatee are similar to an elephant in that they actually replace their teeth. Now, manatees being herbivores, their teeth are all molars. So just like our big flat teeth in the back here, uh, all manatees have uh, large molars that help them crush their food. Now, manatees and elephants will replace their teeth. However, the manatee is unique in that we believe they will actually replace their teeth their entire life, where the elephant only has uh, a set number of teeth they can actually replace. So they have a process, what is called uh, marching molars. So they generate new molars in the back, and they push everything forward <laughs> like a big conveyor belt. And the teeth that are in the front that are the most worn down are actually pushed out. This is something that doesn't limit how long a manatee can live, and at 67, Snooty is still making new teeth. Um, unfortunately, manatees in the wild do not live nearly as long as Snooty. Uh, they're really lucky to make it into their 20s. And this is for a number of reasons. Um, some of the threats that manatee face are natural. Um, they do not handle cold water very well, and they can also be susceptible to a toxic algae we get down here called red tide. Now, of course, manatees usually are associated with boats. Um, if you see a manatee in the wild, it will most likely have a scar on it. Um, scientists now believe that about 80% of manatees that inhabit our waters do have a scar on them. Um, unfortunately, not every animal is lucky enough to survive being hit by a boat. Uh, the good news is, manatees are doing much better now as a population than they were 30 or 40 years ago. And part of that uh, is due to all of the protections and all of the research and all of the rehabilitation that has been in place for those uh, 30 or 40 years. Hopefully, one day wild manatees will live as long as our friend Snooty here. So, thank you for watching and happy Endangered Species Day!